Audio drama in the age of Arthur. The Table Round dot com. O oh, daughter of the southern sun, sweet sister of each flower, dost dream in terraced Avalon a shadow haunted hour, or stand with Guinevere upon some ivied Camelot tower? The Immortal Legends of The Table Round Chapter 2 How Arthur Rode to the Rescue of Leo de Grance and the Gaining of Excalibur The Castle of Camillard is besieged by the renegade King Ryons, desperately hoping for aid from the young King Arthur breaks, Leodocrance. You've run to cover like a fox, but your haughty castle will not protect you longer. Your walls are weak. Your moat is but a puddle. Before the sun sets today, I will pull those walls down around you and shave your beard to line my cloak. This is my hour. He's right, Guinevere. I don't think we can hold out another day. Each sortie is harder than the last to push Back in my men, my brave men, have so little left. I would give my left hand for a Roman legion right now. Father, you've said many times that the eagle of Rome has flown, never to return. Now we can only place our faith in the High King. He will come. I knew supporting that boy would lead to ruin, but I had no choice. I saw him pull the sword from the stone. There was a light. Around him, my girl, as if heaven was looking down upon him. God strike me down if I ignore such a sign. Then we have to have faith. I can see you up there in your toga, Leo de Grantz. Let no man ever say that King Ryan's is not merciful. I give you one last chance to open your gates to me. What then befalls me, Rians? If I yield my castle to you, I will grant you four fine horses, one tied to each limb, to rend your miserable olive-eating carcass. And as for your daughter, I would grant her marriage temporarily to each of my brave soldiers, to dry her tears and give her joy before her death tonight. Damn you, Rions! The jaws of hell gape open for your arrival. <laughs> Ready the catapults! Oh, cursed fate. I would surrender now if I thought it could save you, my sweet daughter. You shame yourself, father. If those doors shatter and the horrid Welshmen overwhelm us, I would do battle myself with my knitting needles. I will ride out. Better to die killing as many of those beasts as we can. Now, daughter, take this dagger. If Rion's dogs take this castle, you know what to do with this before they take you. Yes, I know. I'll stab them in the throat. Oh, my willful girl. If I am willful, father, the fault is yours for letting me have my will. Now, ride out there and bring us victory so that tonight we can sit by the hearth and I can work my needlepoint as you would have me. Aye, my girl. For Cowlyard! Look, the drawbridge lowers. Leodegrantz is riding out to meet Rions. We made it in time. What do you say, Bedivere? Shall we go join them? I will stay at your side. I know I can count on your spear. Now, Gawain, you stay back, out of harm's way. Aye, my lord. But not too far. I may need you. Aye, my lord. But be wary of danger. Aye, my lord. But be brave. Aye, my lord. So, shall we charge? Aye, my lord. Aye. Kay, blow your horn! Let's finish this quick. I'm hungry. Look! 
It's the High King! Fludor, to the Barbican! Penwar, Henwis, get those archers to the curtain wall to support Arthur! Praise be to God, we're saved! Oh, good morning, my lady. Menwu, where have you been? What? Mm, I don't know. Are you drunk? Maybe, maybe. Seems likely, I admit. We are under attack. Still, I figured it would be all over by now. Still the big ugly fellow with the beard cape? Yes. Can't you do something? Use your magic. Perhaps. Yes, I suppose. What would you have of me, my lady? Interpret a dream? Brew a love potion? <laughs> ah, summon lightning or put the enemy to sleep or transform yourself into a great beast and attack. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. Arthur! My king! Ah, Leodegrance, how goes it? Fortune's wheel turns for us with your arrival, but these Welshmen fight like mad animals. Well, I'm here to tame them. Ha! My king, look, there's Rions. King Rions, look to me. I am Arthur, your high king. Eh? You? You've cleaned up a bit since you pulled the sword out of the stone. Enough of this. King Lot and your allies have fled. Cease this battle. You don't need to fight like a pack of cornered dogs. We have quarreled, but it can end with no more bloodshed. Return to your lands and agree to enforce the king's justice, and we can part as friends. Friends? Intriguing. Let me make you an offer, you little wart. Drop your arms. Fly from this battle. Walking backwards, so that you can keep shouting apologies to me. And I will let you live, or at least long enough for you to grow a decent beard, which I will flay off your face to line my collar. Behold this sword, Rions. You witnessed as I pulled this sword from the stone, and you will either submit to it or die by it. You behold this sword. It's not as shiny as yours. It's bigger Heavier and notched from going through the necks of those who stand in my way. Wait, Jesu, was that a giant bear? By the gods. Good. He finally sobered up. That would be Manwu, my court magician. He's a bear? Well, a shapeshifter. When, when he's sober. We can't all have the great Merlin by our side. Well, it's official, Art. Your dog is not the ugliest creature on the battlefield. Stop! Calling my dog ugly! Your men are fleeing, Rions. Even you don't frighten them as much as my knights. This sword and that bear. End this now. Let them flee. I'll kill those cowards in due time. This ends with one of us bathing in the other's blood, little king. Come at me. Let me, my king. You shouldn't dirty your hands with this mangy beast. I am Ryan's king. I do not waste Time on underlings! Oh, my hand! <laughs> I hope all your men are that easily dismembered. Oh, better there! You were unwise to turn your back on me. Die! My king, look out! Get off me! <laughs> Let him up, Gawain. He's half drowned. I, my king. <coughs> Someone take this soggy dog and throw him in a hole somewhere until we can figure out what to do with him. Your Highness, are you alright? I am now. Here I am, the King of the Britons, besieged on all sides to be rescued by you. 
Perhaps the only fighter here younger and less tested than me. And you unarmed. I only did my duty. You won the day for us. Remind me to knight you when I have a spare moment. Aye, my king. <laughs> Better be. Here, Gawain, help me carry him. <laughs> no need, sire. It's only a flesh wound. You lost your bloody hand. <laughs> Pity I was wearing a ring. <laughs> Perhaps you could send someone to try and find it for me. I'll be in my tent. Gawain, take him to my pavilion and see that Merlin attends him. Come on, lad. Easy now. Okay, raise the flags of victory. We will grant pardon to all those who throw down their arms. And look, the bear is going back inside the castle. What a day. Okay, who is that still fighting? Him? That's, uh, Sir Balin. Help me, he's mad. He's mad. He, he's <laughs> mad. Stop him. The fighting is done. The battle is over. The king commands it. Oh, um, hear him. Hear him. I, I yield. Please, sir. Please. <laughs> It's too late for that. Sir Balin. Do not touch me. You dare. You dare attack a man whom I, your king, have granted mercy to. My lord Arthur, I, I beg of you. You dare strike my brother? Please, I, I didn't know. And you face me with naked steel in your hands. I would be well to take your head from the neck, sir. I... I throw myself on the High King's mercy. I am cursed all my life with these wild rages. Forgive me, sire. Forgive? Yes. You are a brave knight and have served me well in this campaign. Perhaps you can learn from example where your training has clearly failed you. I grant you mercy, and I give you your life, Sir Balin the Savage. I banish you from my sight for a term of three years. Perhaps in that time you can learn to control the fire in your I, blood. I thank you, my king. I will prove myself worthy of this mercy. Remember, Balin, fire is man's servant. Except when it rages out of control. Then it destroys him. Truly said, my lord. You are wise and gracious. I will pray on this. Look, sir. Look at the king. This moment will echo throughout his reign. I don't know. I'd have killed the fella. Make an example and all that. This king believes he can make others better simply by being better than they are. Yeah, if I remember my schooling, the last fellow who believed that got nailed to a tree. More wine, Squire Gawain. Thank you, but I fear that the thrill of battle has heated my blood far too much. Mere wine can't possibly be enough to quench it. And what could possibly cool such mighty fiery blood? Mayhaps a kiss from the fairest of maidens. And if not that, perhaps you'll do. You tease me, noble knight. I'm no a knight yet, but that doesn't mean you can't have a joust with me. Keep your hands to yourself, you saucy fellow, or I might quench you with a whole pot of wine over your head. <laughs> now, magic is an elusive thing. You can grasp at it and it flows through your fingers. You might catch it in a song or feel it in the breeze, but be of no doubt... It is everywhere, always. Now look at this primrose. Tis a lovely flower. Or is it? Maybe it's not a flower after all. Do my eyes deceive me? Ah, oh, foolish me. It's been a hummingbird all along. Let me see if I can catch it. Come here, birdie. Oh, whoop. Ah, oh, come here. Oh, almost had it. Wait. <laughs> ah. Ah. I'm there. Gotcha. Oh, look. 
A man might indeed call me a fool. It was not a hummingbird, nor a primrose. It was just a plump fig all along. Look here. And a fine, delicious one at that. <laughs> ah, Caliagrant, Cador. Let me tell you the night I first visited this castle. Ah, the Autograns was just a prince then, and the Pendragon came, Uther that is, with two score of leal men to give skirmish and harassment to ragged bandits raiding out of North Wales. Ah, good. Uh, where was I? Ah, now Ryan's was just a boy then, but long have men of that region succumbed to their... Uh, animal nature. Uh, anyway, between the Saxons, the usurper Vodigern, and the Irish, it seems we never had enough time to deal with the Welsh. My Lord Arthur? Lady Guinevere, it is good to see you. You look tired. I haven't slept. We rode all night here from Bedigrid. And your mead is quite strong. In all the excitement and war horns, I never got the chance to say thank you. Thank me for what? For saving my life? All of our lives. Oh, uh, well... You were very brave out there. Your father pledged himself, and I could do no less. Man's word is God in man. If all of your knights are as courageous and humble as you... Britain will be in good hands. Humility comes naturally. I grew up mucking out stables. So you're not used to greatness yet? No. I mean, I don't think I'd put it like that. It's... it's like... May I give you a word of advice as one who has raised the daughter of a king? Uh, please do. Silence is always your friend. In your silence, people speaking to you will assume you are either wise, or at the very least, gracious. Well then, let me just say this. Merlin, may I speak with you for a moment? Yes, of course, of course. Do you see how they are together, the king and my daughter? Nothing untoward and a little moon eyes and shy sideways glances. You jest, druid. I can see how the king looks at my daughter. <laughs> I would be telling an untruth if I said the king wasn't looking at her like a smitten peasant boy. It is true, the new king did me a great favour, but my daughter, the flower of my old age, is more precious to me than my castle, my kingdom, or even my very life. This king is a mystery to me. Is he baseborn? Where does he come from? Is he the son of Sir Ector, the forest Savage? You will hear much said of the new king, for there are many who hate him and call him baseborn or bastard, and since there is such goodness in his heart and his enemies' hearts are bestial, they hold him less than a man. And there are those who deem him more than man and dream he dropped from heaven. Is he worthy of my child? You should fear not to give this king your only child, for the bards will sing of him hereafter, ringing and echoing through the minds of men. Tonight, in the hour before dawn, I shall take him, and we shall return, and I know your heart will be at ease. Merlin, what is this place? It looks like a mere lake, but even I can feel it's something more. Even the stars here are different. 
Your senses do you credit. This is no earthly shore. Mortal eyes do not often behold these fairy sands. Fairy lands? Holy Mother, defend us. No, be calm. No. I've heard that if you get too close to fairy lands, when you come out you find that seven years have passed, although you thought it was only a night. Oh, Art, have no fear. There is but one sea and a mightier power than mine has led us toward this point. Now hush. Listen. Sword no mortal shall withstand Fashioned by no mortal hand Long we wait the hour shall bring Britain's sword to Britain's king Who is that, Merlin? Whose arm is holding the sword out of the water? That is the Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake? A powerful being. She dwells down in the deep. Calm whatsoever storms may shake the world. Warrior king into thy hand, monarch of a mighty land. That in years unborn shall be Monarch of the mighty sea Great Pendragon, son to thee We shall yield Excalibur Who is Pendragon's son? King Uther only had daughters. You are... What? Silence. She comes. Greetings, Merlin Dream Reader. My lady. Is this the one you spoke of? The son of the dragon? He is. Hmm. I pictured him older. Greeting, Arthur, High King. My lady. Behold, the sword Excalibur, forged in the land of Yenis Avalon, hammered beneath the pounding surf, polished with nine years of charms and the songs of water spirits. The king sword, since before Atlantis was destroyed. Go, boy, go. Oh, uh, yes. Arthur, king, can you read the inscription on this blade? Yes, my lady. It says, wield me. And on the other side of the blade? It says, cast me back. That is the nature of power, to be wielded and cast aside. That is the nature of mortality. The sword to the king is like the king to the land. Answer me this, chief dragon. If I grant you this sword, what shall you grant me in return? I would grant you anything in my power to give. Remember that, young king. Some day I will ask you a boon in return for this sword. I will await the day. Will you? Will you? Farewell, High King. Prove, Prove yourself, yourself worthy, worthy of that, that blade. blade.
This sword is a marvel. And the bejeweled scabbard. Which would you value as higher? The scabbard is finely wrought, but I have never seen a sword to compare to this. Then you should think again. While the sword Excalibur will grant you great power, the scabbard is woven with spells of protection. As long as you wear it, no wound of yours, no matter how deep, will shed blood. Guard it, treasure it, hold it close. Merlin, how can I be Uther Pendragon's son? That is a long tale. Just know that at your birth I took you from court and hid you in the woods, and gave you on to Sir Ector to raise as his own. Then that makes... that makes Queen Anna Morgaus... my... sister. Half-sister, yes as well as the Lady Morgan, And your squire, Gawain, is your nephew. <laughs> See how blessed you are with family. Why did you not tell me this before? Art, you must understand this is about prophecy and the dooms we deem. Some things have happened, some things will happen, and some things must happen. The warp and woof that weaves the webs of the world are not ours to unravel. As always, you speak in riddles. I speak the plain truth. It is the world that is the riddle. <sighs> Come, friend, let us get homeward. It is cold and we rise early tomorrow. With Excalibur, we have a kingdom to forge. Dawn and daytime turn to night. Darkness wakes to morning light While we maidens of the mere Heedless of the changing year Guard the sword Excalibur Hello, this is Frank McDonnell and I play Leo Degrance in The Table Round. Much of the inspiration, as well as the verses sung by the Lake Spirits in this chapter, were taken from J. Commune Carr's 1895 play, King Arthur. The Arthurian legends had fallen out of popularity for much of the 17th and 18th century, but returned with aplomb during the reign of Queen Victoria when they became popular material for verse, paintings and the stage. Carr's play debuted at the famous Lyceum Theatre in London, starring Sir Henry Irving, one of the most famous actors of the era, as Arthur. Interestingly, at the time the theatre was managed by none other than Bram Stoker, the Irish writer most famous for the best-selling novel of all time, Dracula. Written by Morgan Z. Sowell. King Arthur was played by Chandler Walpole, Merlin was Leia Palmer Lee, Kay was Thomas McCutcheon, and Gawain was Tom Southern. Featuring Cathy Vargas as Guinevere, Witty Cranfield as Enid, and Frank MacDonald as King Leo de Grance. King Rions was Kyle Lanterman, Charles Marchion was Sir Balin the Savage, and the Lady of the Lake was Nicola Branch. In the next chapter of the Immortal Tales of the Table Round, Arthur and company celebrate their victory, and the young king suffers a dream prophesying a dark future. <laughs>